And now for something completely different. Here's what's coming up this hour on today's experience. It's Expository Thursday. Expository Thursday. As we work together to know the letter better into the book of Acts and the narrative we travel to understand the things the Lord requires of us as we learn to apply God's timeless truths in our lives. First, they prayed for the new Christians. Boy, this is going to ruffle so many feathers. Get ready. Okay. <laughs> they prayed for the new Christians to receive the Holy Spirit, referring to the apostles. As most of you know, this is a contention for Baptists and Pentecostals and several other faiths. This is not a matter of fellowship, but doctrinal distinction. Are these people Christians? That is what it says in the text. Well, what was the difference? Why, why didn't uh, things happen for them? They were not baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so they didn't even know about the Holy Spirit. We'll get into that. Next, the apostles' prayer is that they would receive the Holy Spirit. Receive. They needed to receive the Holy Spirit because the full gospel was not what they understood. Comforter, counselor, who's that? But be honest. When they received the Holy Spirit, what happened? No tongues are listed here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So step back a bit, please, and don't try to justify your church's wisdom or your upbringing. I know both sides well, and here's what I know. Both of them hold a little bit of truth. Finally, Simon saw that the new Christians were receiving the Holy Spirit by the laying on of the hands of the apostles. He wanted that power. He could make a fortune if he could sell God's presence into people's lives. But God's gifts cannot be bought. Not by anywhere for anything. And Peter coins a phrase, and yes, he did, that often gets the kid glove treatment in interpretation. He told Simon to go to H-E double L hockey sticks. Peter burned him. And he would burn him again. Double ouch. David Spoon's life has been an experience. While growing up in a Jewish family, he made a wrong turn towards drug abuse. Then David Spoon found Jesus Christ, and his life completely changed. The more he studied the gospel, the more he wanted to share his experiences with others. After 35 years of ministry, David discovered a new path of service. He joined KAAM, and this radio program began. You're about to hear the David Spoon Experience. Welcome to the David Spoon Experience, local, national, and heavenly talk. Here's what else we're looking at during the show. Lessons for surviving, living, and prevailing. Politics, entertainment, and current events. Personal revelations. Spiritual observations. My life's insanity is an oy vey. So much more. Oy vey. So much more. Hey, we're asking you, what do you think? You can email us, david at hemustincrease.org. That's david at hemustincrease.org. You can text us, 214-210-8483. That's 214-210-8483. Or you can call us at 972-445-0770. That's 972-445-0770. When you call 972-445-0770, you'll talk to Captain Chris. You know what that's like? That's when when you think you have a lot to do and you go to do it, and it's not that much. <laughs> and then you will be... People ought to just buy stock in you. That's what they ought to do, right? Where should they make their deposits? You can just send it here to the station. I'll get it. Okay. If you have an opinion, a thought, a comment, or a question, we want you to reach out to us. And the reason that is is because it's a fellowship. We do the best we can to encourage, strengthen, pray for, bless one another on a regular basis. In fact, we're going to pray a blessing over the audience in just a moment. But the bottom line to our process here is the Lord is coming back. There's not an option whether he's coming back. It doesn't depend on our understanding of how he's coming. Jesus is coming again. And between now and then, we have a couple of options. We can do nothing, and that will not go well for us. We can ignore it, 
and that would not go well for us. We can pretend to be doing something, that will not go well for us. Or we can be encouraging one another and doing our best to present ourselves before the Lord on a regular basis. That sounds like the winner out of those four. And so what we want to do is we want to encourage you to participate, to, to be a blessing. Even if you're just praying where you're at, fantastic. You don't have to call on the, on the telephone to, to reach out to us. You don't have to do any of that. What you have to do is just draw closer to the Lord. And we don't say you have to. We want you to. And how bad is that to have more of God in your life, right? Okay. Here's your trivia question. Your Bible trivia question. That's just whatever trivia question. Your Bible trivia question. True or false? Samson was a one-man army fighting the Philistine army, but he lost his strength when his hair was cut off. True or false? See? True or false? What were we say we are going to do that at the end of the day? Believe it or not. Yeah, I like that. Uh, okay, if you think you know uh, what the answer is, you know, the big part was that last part. He lost his strength when his hair was cut off. Uh, if you think you know, 972-445-0770. You can also text in 214-210-8483. As well, you can send an email, david, at he must increase dot org. At this time, we are going to pray for the audience, if that's okay with everybody. Uh, we're just going to ask the Lord to bless you. I think that's a cool thing. Let's do it. Father, we come before you right now. We thank you. We praise you. You are awesome to us, and we love you, and we worship you. We thank you. We adore you. You are so kind to us, so much more than we're worth. And we just ask you, Lord, because we are brothers and sisters, because we're in the same family, same dad, same blood, same Holy Spirit, we just ask you that you would bless the people in this audience. The best blessing, Lord, is more of you. So whatever it is they need, great. Whatever it is that's the desires of their heart, as long as it's in line with your stuff, great. But there could be more of you in their lives. We pray for your blessing, the blessing that comes from you, which is you. We pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, got that rolling? Got that rolling? Uh, I'll do the trivia one more time. Probably go a little long on this. Pro I would guess we probably will. Our trivia question is, let's pull up, uh, true or false, Samson, kind of a one-man army fighting machine against the Philistines. Uh, but he lost his strength was when his hair was cut off. True or false? Leave it there. If you know, 972-445-0770. Text 214-210-8483 or send an email, David. And he must increase dot org. Let's get ready for our expository, exciting, unbelievable. It's so fantastic. It's not even this long sound introduction. Let's do it. Wow. <laughs> wow. All I can say is wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. All I can say is wow. <laughs> We really pour it out there, don't we? We just pour We just, there's just no limit to what we, okay. Here we go. All right. Pick it up in Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter 8. This is kind of a rather exciting portion here. And I'm going to tell you right now that if you are strictly Baptist or strictly Pentecostal, part of your feathers are going to get ruffled. It doesn't matter which one you are. Part of them, okay? And that's my way of saying there are many texts that support many positions. And then when you get to a text that doesn't support the position, there's these many end-run justification things that happen. Happens all the time. Same thing when you got in a fight with your sister or your brother. You try and justify it with your parents. Yeah, not so much. Okay, so I'm just kind of giving you that. Here we go. Acts chapter 8. We'll pick it up with, uh, I think we'll pick it up with verse 14. When the apostles, now just remember, Simon, uh, we, we talked about Simon the sorcerer. Uh, he believed he was baptized. P, uh, Philip is praying for people, and God is doing miracles, and it's a great kind of scenario that's going on. Remember, we said this is really important. What is it that was really blessing the people and encouraging the people, and they were all getting excited that there was such great joy in the city, and that was that the gospel was being proclaimed and demonstrated uh, through Philip the Evangelist, who's one of the original seven deacons. 
Now we pick up verse 14. When the apostles back in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message. I just want to say something about people that have a hard time with the word accepting, like accepting the Lord. It only says it about 57 times in the New Testament. So stop that legalism. When the apostles back in Jerusalem heard the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new Christians to receive the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit had not come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Before we get into the fighting that's already taking place with one, the oneness Pentecostal group saying you can only be baptized in the name of Jesus, here is a definitive statement that tells you that's not true, so okie dokie, take a break. And then those people that are like, well, the Holy Spirit always accompanies the gospel, well, that's not true because that didn't take place here because these people are Christians, but they were only baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which means there was no obedience to the command from Christ who said— who baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. So there's an addition to the gospel being added on, and then we're going to talk about Peter prays for them, and John prays for them. They received the Holy Spirit. And what happened? They received the Holy Spirit. Did they speak in tongues? No. <laughs> so, so they, they, well, could they have? Well, later on in Acts 19, they do. And it's just like, and then they do that again in, in, in Acts chapter, uh, was it 12 or no? Uh, 10, 11, whatever. So I think my point is it's not always the same always all the time ever. And if you at this point in your Christianity have not figured out that God does stuff differently, and people are like, well, that's not according to my doctrine. Well, your doctrine's stupid. That's not my fault. The bottom line is God does what he does when he wants to do it. Never, ever, ever has he asked somebody's permission. He has never gone back and said, well, what do you think? Is that okay that way? And the Lord doesn't care. He said, well, no, no, he's, he's got to be true to his word as he declares his word, not as you understand his word. There's a big difference between those two concepts right there. And so the, uh, the reason I'm harping on it, boy, Dave, you're making a big deal about it, is because when this becomes an area of contention amongst Christians, that's sinful. <laughs> you can sort of go. That's not, this is not a reason not to fellowship with other Christians. Uh, I'm looking at this text. I can't fellowship with that guy or that gal over there. That is terrible. Let's read the text, process it, use what it says, be a part of it, and not use this to separate from one another because that's not okay. Do you think that the Lord, I'm just asking, uh, you think that the Lord's going to sit there and say, you know, you were right. You should really never hang out with other people that really love and adore me and, and, and worship me and try and live their lives for me because they see that different than you. Way to go. <laughs> Just, I guess I don't see the Lord doing that anywhere in the framework of Scripture. I mean, I see the 12 tribes of Israel and everybody kind of doing their own little weird thing in their own little tribes. And uh, even though they had some similar goals, they had some different processes and different cultures. That part's fine. But don't use that as a wedge, because that's only the enemy using the wedge. So don't be able to calm down. Okay. All right. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break, because I can go on this for days, let alone the show. And then we're going to come back, and then we're going to get into the praying for the new Christians to receive the Holy Spirit, which is like okie dokie. That sounds like a good plan. So you don't want to go anywhere because when we come back, you will see things perhaps you've not seen before. You're listening to the uh, David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the true station here in Texas. By the way, Samson, it was what? True! True! Cut his hair, out his strength went. True! All right, we'll be back. What is the David Spoon experience? And God's it's like, there's no room there. It's like, well, no, no, no. I, I can, I can, you know, not vote for either kingdom. Well, let me get this straight. You're not voting for the kingdom of God. Therefore, you're also trying to be a supporter of the kingdom of darkness. How's that work? That doesn't work. And in, in lieu of that, you know, I was, uh, had a discussion with my son. We were talking about 
preparation and being ready because you never know when the Lord, you don't know when that trumpet's going to blow for you. You don't know at that moment where God's going to go ding dong, time's up. And I say, I said, you always got to be ready. He said, well, you can't always be ready. It's like, no, you always got to be ready. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, be ready. Always be ready for you do not know the day that the Lord will come. And that's not just from an eschatological point of view for life. That's for you individually. You got to be ready and watchful and aware because this is kingdom stuff. And there's a kingdom being built to glorify God. And there's all the opposing kingdoms. And it's a pretty straightforward question. Which kingdom are you trying to support? That's the question. And if you say, well, I'm not supporting any kingdom, then you are opposed to the kingdom of God. Because you're either helping advance his kingdom or you're in opposition. And that's where Jesus split the line. And you think, well, that, that doesn't seem fair. We have a great word around this show that we like to use every once in a while, but with tons of love. Tough. It's like, it's it's not whether you think it's fair or not. You know, well, I don't think God, a God of love would do it this way or this way. Too bad what you think. You're not God. That's not up to you. Well, that's just what the Bible says. So let me get this straight. So you believe that God can create the universe, but he can't write a book? Boy, that argument's going to get lost every single time. So my whole point in bringing this up is there's it's not a contradiction at all. You're either for, you're either for in Luke 9, 49 and 50, you're either for the kingdom, advancing the kingdom, driving out demons in the name of Jesus Christ, trying to make declaration for the truth of God, or you're against the kingdom, whether you are verbally, physically against it or whether you are verbally and physically doing nothing. There is no neutral. You're either a kingdom advancer or you're against the kingdom. And what's really hard, are you ready for your noodle to get baked here, is the decisions that we make advance kingdoms. Do we consider our decisions before we make these decisions, do we consider what kingdom we're impacting? Wow. Isn't that tough? The David Spoon Experience. Amazing grace. How sweet. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Get ready, because some of the stuff that's coming down the pipe is going to be a little bit mind-blowing, so be prepared. Here is your trivia question. When there was a war in heaven, when there was a war in heaven, yeah, you need to read Revelation chapter 12. When there was a war in heaven, what name was given to the ejected dragon? ha, <laughs> Let's see if you got that answer. When there was a war in heaven, what name was given to the ejected dragon? Not dejected, ejected. Okay. Uh, if you think you know, 972-445-0770. You can also text in 214-210-8483. As well, you can send an email, david at he must increase. Dot org. So a couple things to tell you. We do have people that are texting. Then you pray. We'll pray one more time for the audience for health and things of that nature. Uh, but before we do anything else, we do have a requirement on this show. I know that most people are thinking, is this really a requirement? Well, it is for me. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to say it that way. Uh, here you go. Uh, wait, that's the wrong piece of paper. Wait, that's the wrong piece of paper. This is – this is. Uh, oh, there it is. Well, I had to find the paper that had the jokes on it. Okay. All right. All right here's a couple of jokes. Ready? There you go. Three, they're very quick ones, but they're good ones. Okay. Uh, it was pouring outside the church. The preacher was pouring out his heart inside the church. The preacher realized that he had made the people wait for a long time. He said, I think I've spoken too long. And a voice at the back said, not at all. Please carry on. The rain hasn't stopped. Okay. Uh, young member. Uh, Pesser. 
Is it not wrong to make a gain out of somebody else's mistake, Pastor? Well, it's certainly most wrong. It's a terrible thing. Why? Uh, what is there to doubt about that? The young mentor said, good. Then kindly refund the fees you took for marrying us last year. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, here you go. Here's the last one. So remember, people, these are not theologically correct jokes. They're jokes. That That's why they're jokes. A Bible uh, college class, the lesson was about King Herod offering even half his kingdom on seeing the daughter of Herodias dancing, the teacher. Suppose you are King Herod. You face this problem. This is, this is the situation. You offer half your kingdom, and then she asks you for the head of John the Baptist, and you don't want to give it. What would you do? One hand went up. And a young girl said, I will tell her the head of John the Baptist is not in the half of the kingdom which I'm offering you. <laughs> Wrong half. <laughs> okay. All right. People are like, what are you guys doing? There was a war in heaven. What name was given to the ejected dragon? There you go. Ejected dragon. If you think you know the answer... Then uh, you can call 972. Like that stall? Uh, 445 You can text in 214-210-8483. Or you can send an email, David, at he must increase.org. We are in the text in the book of Acts. So for those that are trying to figure out the background, I'll just help you real quickly. This will really, I think this will make it pretty straightforward. I was born and raised Jewish. I had a a recreational pharmaceutical, a purveyor of recreational pharmaceutical experience. I was a drug dealer. And then uh, I became a Christian by the grace of God. I have a Baptist, a Pentecostal, and a charismatic ordination. And then I rejected another one because they wanted really, really astronomical fees for it. And I said, no. So yeah, I'm still Jewish. So it's like, no way. And then I have a BA degree in uh, ministry and leadership. I have a master's in theological study from Regent University, which is Pentecostal charismatic. And I am three weeks away from my doctorate with Liberty University, which is Baptist. So you're looking for diversity? I'm your guy. Okay, here's the bottom line. Not every scripture that you read supports your theological bent. And it's not that it's bad to have a bent unless the bent keeps you from fellowshipping with other Christians. Then it's wrong. Okay, You cannot tell me when the persecution increases, and if the Lord tarries, you can count on the persecution increasing, that when they're shooting at Christians, the two people running away who are genuine Christians are going to run next to each other, and one's going to go, uh, you Pentecostal or you Baptist? I'm Baptist. Well, get away from me. I mean, that's not, that's not exactly how that's going to work, is it? No, it is not. And what we better catch quicker than later is the Scripture makes it clear. We have one Heavenly Father. We are blood relatives as we are all saved by the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ, and we drink from one Holy Spirit. And the Scripture in Ephesians says to keep the unity that is found in the, the brotherhood, and that means to keep that exists already and that unity exists in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to separate it by doctrine is a sad case indeed. And when your leaders tell you to do that, they're wrong. It doesn't, I don't, that's, no, he's the most brilliant person in the world. Yeah, but he's wrong. I mean, even the Dr. Fahrenheit, who's got more degrees than anybody else, can be wrong. The wrongness is when the people of God are being split apart. That's wrong, okay? Jesus gave a new command, didn't he? A, he gave a summation. Love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love your neighbors and love yourself. John 13, a new commandment I give you. What's that new commandment, Jesus? Love one another. There you go. All right. So now into the text. Is that a nice long buildup? I can't believe we didn't get any answers to the trivia question. Uh, I'll do it one more time. I think what, what uh, there was a war in heaven. What name was given to the ejected dragon? Look at Revelation chapter twelve nine seven two four four five zero seven seven zero or text in two one four two one zero eight four eight three or send an email david at he must increase dot org acts chapter eight. We're back up at verse. Uh, 14, when the apostles back in Jerusalem heard the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, so they accepted it, right? They sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new Christians. What are they? They're 
Christians. Oh. Prayed for the new Christians to receive the Holy Spirit. To what? To receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Were they saved? The Bible calls them Christians. <laughs> yes. Do they have the Holy Spirit? No. Why? They were only baptized in the name of Jesus. They didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. If you just said comforter to them, they just said uh, blanket. Would you like a fluffy one? They wouldn't even know what you're talking about. Let's get that to be explained. And so the Holy Spirit not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of Jesus. Now look what happens. Try not to make it say what it does it or don't make it say what it should. Peter and John laid their hands on these believers. It's another reference that they're believers. Okay? This is like the third time. And they received the Holy Spirit. Oh, another term for acceptance is received. Isn't that amazing? So there's all this acceptance and receiving, and they're praying, and they receive the Holy Spirit. Wow. And then what happens? They go off, and they're speaking in tongues. Nope. They bounce around like, nope. They, nope. They, nope. In Acts 19, they do it, but not here. And you're thinking, well, why? And the answer is because God does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, and doesn't ask anybody's theology or permission. Because God is God. That's enough. What I find more <clears throat> fascinating is they receive the Holy Spirit. And some of you, uh, and some, uh, this is me too, so I'll put me in the category. You know, you have this scriptural command in Ephesians to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we don't think that we ever need any more of the Holy Spirit uh, ever in our lives. And it's like, really? Well, first of all, Jesus said that the Father would give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Perfect present tense in the Greek. So there's there's definitely this need to have the Holy Spirit being given to us. Next, it said that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Next, you look at the book of Acts. Three times in four chapters, the, the apostles had to be filled with the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, filled with the Spirit. Because why? They were emptying out while they were using and utilizing the Holy Spirit in the process of ministry. So they needed more. They need more of God. They're pouring out the kingdom of God. They need the Holy Spirit pouring back into them. I didn't write the book. Just look at it. If they were filled with the Holy Spirit, it never went. The Holy Spirit never went anywhere. There's no completion. Why do I got to be filled again and again and again and again and again? And why does the scripture say be filled with the Holy Spirit? It's like, okay. So the whole premise there is these guys need the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's get rocking. Again, is this a doctrinal issue? No. And you think, well, I don't even understand how that works. Good. Ask God. And you think, well, I need to go to a Bible teacher. No. <laughs> you need to go to God. Go to God and ask him and say, and because this is the promise that Jesus made. The Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Okay. Do it. Should I expect anything? I don't know. Is anything going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. Ask God. He's the one who's giving. Ask him. Does, must this happen? No. I find it amazing that people are like, well, unless they speak in tongues, they're not really filled with the Holy Spirit. Really? I've seen Christians who are not Pentecostal or Baptist be more Christ-like in their fruit than anybody else. They don't have the Holy Spirit. You've lost your mind. Somebody loves their enemy. That person doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Sure. I got a bridge to sell you. It's in New York. <laughs> Let me know if you want to buy it. Okay? All right. Somebody on hold for answering the chance. <laughs> you, you can't get me going on this stuff. I go crazy. Uh, send them on through. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? This is Don. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, Don. I'm just on a rant and a rave. <laughs> you sure are, brother. <laughs> Preach on, bro. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. All right. We got our trivia question. I, I could just talk about this for hours. That's the problem. Uh, trivia question. When there was a war in heaven, what name was given to the ejected dragon? Yes, it was the devil. It was the devil and our <laughs> Satan. That is correct, Amundo. <laughs>
That is right. Kicked him out. And so whether whether you think that the, that portion is future-oriented or not, I've always found it amazing. People go, well, God can never be in the presence of evil. Okay, but then Satan had to be kicked out of heaven. So, I, you know, it's just like you got to understand what that means. It means he doesn't fellowship with that. So, anyway, yeah, would, excellent I job. I would do a segment on that to ex- explain that to everybody. Yeah. Because it is a little weird uh, to understand. Right. You know, is it present or is it now or did it already happen? You know, and so forth. Yeah. The answer on all that is yes, yes, and yes, just to let you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I hope someone's listening to know that. <laughs> I knew that, but I just. We will. You know, I, we'll do an es- I didn't know that. Well, we got to do. Like, we got to do an eschatology thing, but we got to present. You got to present. Both sides. So I've done a teaching before. You present. There's there's four major views, and if if you can just listen to all the views, you would find out that what's amazing is that each view contributes this enormous amount of literature and encouragement to the church. And my only premise in that, because I'm a manifold millennialist, which don't even bother looking up on Google. You'll never find it. There's only about a thousand of us in the entire world. The the bottom line is we we look at it and say every one of these theological lines adds to the church and if it's adding to the church and strengthening people we want it and that's That's the attitude there you go bro there it is that's right all right good job brother enjoy your show okay i appreciate that all right we'll talk to you soon all right god bless bye-bye god bless you bye-bye all right, we'll take a break and then come back, uh, assuming that uh, I don't uh, you know, fall off the chair or something. Uh, forgive me for not getting back to all of the texts. We're just uh, <laughs> a little behind. Uh, you're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back with something special. So I punish myself. I go down to the jail of my soul. Hello, Captain Chris here from the David Spoon Experience. I help coordinate the radio show, and we're looking for a few good people to join our crew and become representatives, ambassadors, and stewards of the radio ministry. Now, you may be thinking, well, gee, I'd love to get involved, but I'm not very qualified for ministerial positions. Me too! The truth is that because you are a child of our Heavenly Father, that you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you seek to live by the power of the Holy Spirit, you already have all that you need to have to be part of this ministry. Uh, but Chris, don't I need to be perfect? <laughs> no! Just go to hemustincrease.org. That's hemustincrease.org. Click on the three lines at the top right of the website, and then click on the Ambassador's Initiative link. Fill out the form, and we will reach out to you. Sorry, no parking tickets will be paid for you as an ambassador through this position, though you may appeal to a higher power. What is the David Spoon Experience? Hey, David, this is Al. Hi, you brother. Doing I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Okay. I going to a call, so I wanted to try to get this answer in. All right, that and that's a that's a good. I don't know if you had a chance to hear that with Matt or not, but boy, I like that guy. He's got a you know he's, he's committed to the doctrine. I love people that are committed. Uh, I don't know. Will, will you put his website on Facebook or? On uh, your I can or put something? it. I'll put it on our website. Give them a link, okay. and uh, I'll make sure I got to get permission because I don't want to do anything where they're not. You know, I, I'm real. I try to be really careful, but but I don't think they'll have any sure. problem with that. So we, we won't take anything. It's just it's good for apologetics, and we're going to use some of it. All right, here you go. Here okay. you go. Here's your first one. Who had a late night visit from an angel who assured him that he would be safe aboard a storm tossed ship i'm i don't think this is right but i'm gonna go with peter so close what's the other name that's really close to that <laughs> paul yes that's it that's it there it is <laughs> All right, that's in Acts chapter 27, verse 23 and 24. Before they had the shipwreck at the end there at 28, he said to relax, everybody's going to be fine. Nobody's going to die on the ship. You're all going to end up at this island, you know, and so he was telling everybody to calm down. That's the person who had the late night uh, visit. Now, Peter did have a visit from an angel in prison in Acts 12, so you could make an argument that that was part of the answer too, but that's why we went to the safe aboard a storm-tossed ship that's mm-hmm. that's where we get yeah. the definition so 
Good shot, though. Very good. Very good, my brother. You know how much I appreciate it. Good job. Yeah, and I'll never forget that answer. Always, <laughs> never, always, you will Paul never now. forget that. Paul. This is Paul. This is Paul. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent job, my brother. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Y'all have a great day. All right. Thank you, brother. God bless you. If Jesus was like Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. We're getting ready for our next trivia question. This is kind of a toughie. It's not too tough, but tough enough. Okay, so you guys should know that in the New Testament, you have the Gospels. Then you have the Book of Acts. Then you have the Pauline or Paulinian epistles, and then you have the general epistles, and then the uh, uh, the Apocalypse writing of Revelation. The answer to this is in the general epistles. Okay, can't can't make that any nicer. The answer to this is in the general epistles. Who asked the question? What causes quarrels and fights among you? Who asked that question in an epistle? What causes quarrels and fights among you? If you think you know, you can call in 972-445-0770. You can also text in 214-210-8483. As well, you can send an email, david at he must increase.org. So I do want to tell you a couple of things that are uh, really important. And uh, I, we got to send you to the website because sending you to the website is an opportunity to give. And how much do I like talking about money? I hate it. But the bottom line is we need money to get it going. <laughs> so I can't, you know, I can't change any of that. So uh, if you can give, great. If you can't, okay, we always say if you can't, then pray for us. You can spend a few minutes praying, and we will take that all day long. Do your best. Do whatever you can, but pray for us. We could use the help. Uh, go to he must increase.org. Prayer request? He must increase.org. Praise report? He must increase.org. Looking to give to this ministry? He must increase.org. Confused by what's happening right now? He must increase.org. He must increase.org. <laughs> Uh, that just reminded me of Donkey Kong for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's the third elevators where you go doing, 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 right? That's what it reminded me of. Okay. See, when I was supposed to be at work sometimes, I, I know, again, I'm the only person that ever did this in the, uh, in the uh, 80s, in the 70s and 80s. Uh, sometimes you had to get a couple of quarters and just go to the arcade. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm being honest about it. All right, somebody's ready to answer a trivia question. Send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Well, it's not a Donkey Kong. It's a Pac-Man. <laughs> it's from Pac-Man. How you doing, Samson? <laughs> Good. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Let's do the trivia question first. Here you go. Sure. Who asked the question? Now, this is in the general epistles. Who asked the question, what causes quarrels or what causes quarrels and fights among you? Who asked that question in the general epistles? King James. No, that I is mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus James. That's right. Jesus is James, the Lord's brother. That's it. That's the person who's in charge of Acts 15. Some people go, well, no, that's Peter, James, and John. It's like, no, no, that James died in Acts 12. Wrong. So uh, good job on that one. How are things going? You doing pretty good? Uh, I mean, I'm good, doing good in the Lord, and uh, he he just sustained me every day. So I'm I'm just very grateful to to Jesus and my faith in Him. Amen. That's how you need to be. I think that's wonderful that you do that, and it's wonderful that you're you're fighting against it, and you know the enemy's coming against you and trying to trying to drag you down. And it's like you have to make the decision. Now, it's not that it's not hard, but you can still make the decision to rejoice in the Lord. So why so downcast, O oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. And uh, one other reason I try to give the trivia answer so I could talk and get some encouragement from Dr. David Spoon and uh, his audience. So, 
So that's why whenever I get the opportunity, I try to to sneak in through the <laughs> trivia. <laughs> to sneak in the trivia so you can get some prayer. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> let me, that's true, actually. <laughs> I know you do that. We don't mind. Well, let me pray for you, okay? Let's do okay. it. Let's do it. Father, we come before you right now. Lift up our brother to you. And, Lord, I just pray you pour some joy into his heart. He needs to have the joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That It's needed for not just Samson. And it's a good opportunity to pray for everybody in our audience. That joy would be filling up in their hearts by the power that comes from you. That you would... Pour yourself into us, and that your strength is what we would rely on, not our strength, and that we would entrust ourselves to you fully and believe in you diligently and be immovable in our faith. Help us to be steadfast in our faith. Fill us full of joy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Hey, David, can I ask you a theological question while you are a doctor? You are not a Dr. Phil, but you are Dr. David. <laughs> you can. I, I don't know if I'll be able to answer today just because we're on the roll on the on the Holy Spirit and the Acts stuff, but what would you like to ask? Okay, w- would it be okay, like, when you are going through some downtime and praying, just but to just try to entertain yourself and watch some uh, comedy show, is that okay? Of course, as long as it doesn't, as long as, here's the here's the thing I would say, and this is a big deal, I actually think. If you watch something and it grieves any part of your spirit, stop watching it. But if you watch something like Noel and I used to, at late at night, we did this, uh, and every time I tell the story, I get in trouble, but we used to watch Green Acres late at night. And I mean late at night isn't like 1.30. Like I'd get back and she'd get back and we'd still be up, right? So we'd get in bed and then we'd watch Green Acres. And one or two times we sang the theme song together. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, so sometimes, yeah, we were the Green Acres is the place for me. Anyway, yeah, it's fine as long as it's not wounding, as long as it's not defaming. And if it does affect you, don't watch it. That's the that's the that's the rule of thumb. Some people, and I'll just be honest with you, and I wish people would be more forward. So some people, like you, know, the Big Bang Theory, they have a real, I have a problem with that because it's Big Bang and so on and so forth. And other people watch it, and they go, who cares? And so you know what? If it bothers you, don't watch it. If it doesn't bother you, fine. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, whenever I feel like it, I'll just stop it. But the other time, I just try to decompress myself. To relax, yeah, kind of thing. I don't, I don't so think there's just, anything wrong with watching Scooby Doo, but that's me. Okay, <laughs> Scooby Doo, <laughs> ruh <Ruh-ruh. laughs> Anyway, <laughs> all right, good job, brother. All right, thank you so very much. All right, love you. Love you too. Bye bye. Bye. All right, all right. Where are we at? What are we doing? We can't do history. Wait, we didn't do our DNA. Got to do DNA. Okay, even history can get lost, but DNA can't get lost. Uh, that's the for sure. DNA. So people, this is what our DNA is. You can share this with everybody. You should have this every day. Ready? D, draw closer to the Lord. Daily. David. Daily. Daily, Dave. Which is why we would say every day. <laughs> See, every day. And here's the, the key in it. It doesn't mean you have to build uh, uh, some kind of altar and spend four hours. Nobody's saying that. But you you can spend time with the Lord. If you can spend time flipping through the channels, you can spend five minutes with the Lord. Okay, you can't argue with that. And never be ashamed of Jesus' words. Never be ashamed of what he has to say, no matter what the world says. That's the D, that's the N, and then the A. Always be ready. To serve. To serve, which means that we're sensitive to the Lord and aware of what he may want to use us as a vessel, and then also aware of other people, how they doing. Because it's easy for all of us to get caught up in our universe, but other people matter, and we have to be aware and be willing to be a vessel. Okay? All right. All right, we did that. We did that. Oh, boy, we are so far past it, huh? Right? Okay. Okay, let me do this one little part. (laughs) Then we'll exit. Then we'll come back. Then we'll do history. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I'll figure out what the good tease is to, to try and get you guys to come back. Anyway, here we go. So we're in this uh, portion in Acts. We're just talking about this. Peter and John laid their hands upon the believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. Here's where things get a little dicey. Here we are in verse uh, 18. When Simon saw the Holy Spirit was given, when the apostles placed their hands upon people, 
He offered money to buy this power. Let me have this power too, he exclaimed, that, so that when I lay may, my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. Let me explain to you why this is in Scripture without being overly arrogant. I'm just semi-arrogant right now. Without being overly arrogant, how important this is. He offered money to receive the grace of God. You can't buy or earn your way into heaven. You don't have enough and you can't do enough. We did a statistical analysis. I know you guys are thinking I'm crazy. Nope, not really did it. So if you say age of accountability is at 13 years, which is the Jewish tradition, and then you live till you're 80, so that's going to be 67 years of sinning. And if you count 365 times 67, and then you figure you sin, let's see, externally maybe 3 to 12 times a day externally, and at least 10 to 30 internally. So you take that number and you add it and you times it by the 365 days times the 30 or the 67 years, you've sinned somewhere in the neighborhood of about 450,000 times in your lifetime. Do you got 450,000 good works? No, you don't. I mean, I'm just saying, no, you don't. Now, some of us who've been down a few darker paths, that number is probably a little closer to a million. <laughs> Let me just say, I might be one of those people. I don't know. But that's not the point. The point is you're never going to be good enough. You're never going to buy your way in. Salvation is a gift from God, period. It is received by faith. It is given by grace. It's a gift that God gives. You can't earn it. You can't deserve it. The biggest thing you can do is a big, fat thank you and leave it there. That is what is being taught here. You can't buy God's favor. You can't buy God's salvation. You can't, it's not, you can't do that. You cannot do that to such a degree that when we come back, we're going to see what Peter said, and people aren't that happy with it, but I didn't write the book. So we will examine what saying has rocked the church in the Bible. Okay? All right. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. The Christian faith is being attacked. 50 years ago, people would disagree with Christianity, but with a sense of respect. Those days are over. The rage, the flesh, the enemy, and the atmosphere of sin is growing and growing. Jesus said in Matthew 24, the love of many will grow cold. And if it's not the end now, it's certainly a lot closer than it was yesterday. You may be from a Baptist background. David Spoon has that. You may have a Pentecostal background. He has that too. You may have a non-denominational background. Yep, he's got that as well. You may be from the Church of Christ, Presbyterian, Methodist, Church of God, or some other denomination. But if you're looking for a show that's Bible-based, spirit-led, and a bit nutty, give David a listen for a while. If you like it, great. If not, no worries. The David Spoon Experience is the David Spoon experience. So the situation uh, for the woman turned out to be fine. But remember, he's there with Jairus, and Jairus' daughter is dying. Uh, verse 35, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. This is a situation for Jairus that went from worse to the worst. All right, you know how we said it can go from bad to worse? We were talking about that. Well, it can go from bad to worse to the worst. And this is the worst. 
The guy's daughter died. Oh, she wasn't just really sad. She died dead. And they even said to her, "What? there's no point in talking to this guy anymore. This is over. Situation done. And that's how a lot of us process situation done. But then Jesus does what Jesus does because he's so amazing. He overheard what they said to him. They didn't say it to Jesus. They said it to the guy. They said it to, to Jairus. Right? And they said to him, why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus said to, to Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe. So there are three things that you just you can't miss this. Number one, Jesus is telling the guy whose daughter just died, ignore them. <laughs> it's like, can you imagine? Okay. Uh, the doctor just pronounced her dead. Yeah, ignore that guy. <laughs> what? He's the doctor. Ignore that guy. That's just like the blind men who are like people are telling him, be quiet, stop it, stop it. And he shouts out all the more. It's at some point you just got to ignore any external noise that hasn't been sanctioned by God and just go, yeah, I'm not paying attention to that. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas, where we're about to reveal the thing that nobody wants to reveal, ever be heard, but it is in the scripture, so I can do nothing but share it. Before we get to that point, let's do our trivia question. We are tight on time, but I am confident you will get this. Through whom, according to the Apostle Paul, do we have peace with God? Through whom, who, whom, I don't care. Through whom, according to the Apostle Paul, do we have peace with God? If you think you know the answer, you can, you've got to do it quick though. Call in 972-445-0770. You can also text in 214 210 8483 as well. You can send an email, David at he must increase.org. Props to Joy Ann and Cordelia striking first on almost every single question. Pretty good, ladies. Pretty good. All right, let's do our history. Let's go live in the past. Let's go live in the past. All right, not a ton in the history realm today. Just to let you know, today is Meteor Day. Uh, okay. It's like, fine. <laughs> like, is that important? I don't know. This is the day when the big meteor hits us. Huh? I guess this. I guess that's what they're looking for. I don't know what they're looking for. Uh, 1905, Albert Einstein publishes his Electrodynamics of the Moving Body on Relativity. Yeah, I understood that. <laughs> no, but I understand this. In 1967, the first Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest took place. I get that. Okay, You know who won the very first one? Uh, Walter Paul, a 32-year-old truck driver who ate 127 hot dogs in an hour. (laughs) I could do like four. In an hour, I could probably do five. (laughs) That's a lot of hot dogs. Oh, my goodness, 127. Uh, No, no, no. Oh, 1953, the first Corvette came out. Uh, It was white with a red interior and a black top. It's the only color combination offered where they changed that didn't they okay all right all right we did that uh a trivia question uh if nobody calls in we can't tease it for the next section because there is no next section so we'll just uh make sure to tell you what it is uh through through whom according to the apostle paul do we have peace with god if you think you know 972-445-0770 you can text in 214-210-8483 or send an email david at he must increase dot org so yeah i didn't write this <laughs> okay so i'm just telling you that okay uh here's back to simon when simon saw the holy spirit was given when the apostles placed their hands on the peop- on people's uh heads they placed their hands on people's heads by the way it wasn't wasn't weird back then it's only weird now 
Okay, but it is in the Bible, right? Okay. Uh, he offered money to buy this power. Let me have this power, he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit too. Uh, this is out of the New Living Translation. So for those of you that are more dogmatic on that, just bear with me. But Ephesians 2, 8, 9, God saved you by his special favor or by grace. When you believed, you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done. So none of us can boast about it. In other words, salvation is a gift from God and nobody gets to go, I earned it. I might have earned my doctorate. I can boast about that, but that's not salvation. Salvation's at a whole nother level. So then Peter, in his kindness, uh, gives this response. And if you don't understand that this actual response is what triggered in society the saying, Peter replied, may your money perish with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. You have no place in this for your heart is not right before God. When he said your money perish with you, that's where the expression of, well, you can go to H-E double hockey sticks. That's where it came from. Just so you can know. You think, no, it exactly came from this. Peter said exactly what we won't say on the air so we don't get fined. Well, I can't get fined. But the idea behind this is he's like, yeah, no. <laughs> It's like, it's not even nice. It's not even, there's nothing, you know, oh, Christians are supposed to be nice. Does this sound nice to anybody? Am I the only person sitting there thinking, I think Peter just dropped the mic on this guy. Like, you know what? You're going to burn. And guess what? After that burn, you're going to burn again. And then you're really going to burn. You're burned. It's like, wow. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of grace there. Yeah, no, to me either. <laughs> Doesn't seem like there's a lot of grace there. Peter replied, may your money perish with you for thinking that God's gift can be bought. You have no part in this. Your heart is not right before God. Bam. And down he goes. We'll pick it up next week as we talk about uh, a little bit more about Simon. In the meantime, the answer through whom, according to Apostle Paul, do we have peace with God? The answer is Jesus. That's who we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We will take our break, and we will have a show tomorrow, as far as I know. Uh, you're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on, on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas, taking a 22-and-a-half-hour break. Then we'll come back. More Insanity with Spoonanity. Talk to you then. Thanks a lot for all the blessing that you give me. Thanks a lot. For all the ways that you have can The views expressed on the preceding program were those of the speakers and not necessarily those of KAAM, DJRD Broadcasting, or its sponsors.